10 things you missed at the 4.2 Fontaine trailer, Masquerade of the Guilty. Let's take a look at this, shall we? Let us take a look. I, Farina, will use this trial to show the world the true meaning Do of not justice. So many voices. Let me know if the volume's good, by the way. Sometimes in these videos, the volume goes a little bit loud and you can't hear me. Oh, it is what it is. Judging the God of Justice herself was long being foreshadowed since the start of the game. It has. A lot of people ever since Fontaine came out and even before were quite literally saying like that Fontaine will end with the God of Justice being judged. But they were thinking it would be by Celestia, not by like the oratories and stuff because we didn't know the oratories existed. I remember that vividly. The description of Varunada Lazarite Gemstone states, My ideals have no stains. I must correct you. People here bear no sins in the eyes of the gods. Oh. Only laws of the tribunal can judge someone. They can judge even me, so praise my magnificence and purity. Okay, bitch. You're getting the death sentence. What's so pure about that? Huh? What's so what's so pure about that? And with the trailer suggesting ch suggesting the same, the to remember the Lord will now this begin. According to the judgment of the it ended quick. He says it pretty well, right? Nouvelle's kind of base. The oratrice mechanique de Danalise Cardinal. The Hydro are come to be punished by. Oh, yeah. The death sentence. Sounds like he's gonna cry when he says that. But again, you gotta remember, chat, and YouTube viewers, if you're watching this, Nuvelet always refers to Farina as Farina. He never fucking sees the Hydro Archon. He do but maybe because it's in more of a official setting, maybe he would. Maybe he just would. Did he in Act 1 at all? I don't know. It's a more formal setting in an actual trial. So I can add, yeah, no, maybe he just would. Hmm. The lore from Fontaine's Wind Glider also suggests that the previous Hydro Archon Agiria committed a sin for the sake of her people. Oh. Which is likely the original sin that Agiria mentions in the Overture teaser. The original ah. sin is the fairest. Everyone sinks. What did she do? Uh oh. Make the most of the final feast. Because for the sinners. The curtain call has come. Oh, God. And which Nouvellet also mentions in his demo. You who were born with original sin. Yeah. Go forth and search for the long buried truth before all is lost beneath the waves. Dude, at five is going to be fucking insane. I'm sorry. Listen. Ah, at five is going to be so insane. I feel like there's going to be lore drops literally left and right. I hope it's like a six hour quest. I'm not even going to cap. I hope it's like a six hour quest. It seems Verena will be judged for the consequences of this original sin. True, it does. Every Just like Child was judged, even though it wasn't him. It was probably fucking Skirk. Damn, foreshadowing, chat. Foreshadowing. Everyone on the, on the street oh. who happened to be close to the water didn't have a chance to escape. As the water levels rose, they suddenly disappeared. Not Skirt, the whale. Yeah, but I'm going based off the fact that maybe she's the one controlling the whale or she is the whale even. So. Shouldn't gods be all powerful? Yes, they should, NPC. Is it really an Archon's duty to protect their people? Wait, isn't that literally their duty? <laughs> Oh, am I dumb? According to Celestia, Agaria was given the duty to judge guilty humans. Ah. Oh. Zhongli is bound by contracts over ever since he received the Gnosis. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure their actual duty, like, they preside over places to rule over the place and protect the people there. And Venti's ideal of freedom leads him to not directly rule his own people. Yeah, but ruling and keeping safe is two very different things, though. You don't have to rule them to keep them safe. Technically. Or realistically. The sinner was in Caribe's quest. Does no one remember? There's not just one sinner. That that's not a thing. Gold's a sinner. King Dashrut's a sinner. All the old original Camrya people are sin uh, sinners, according to um, or a lot of them, according to Kaya. Right? There's a lot of a lot of different sinners, which has even made others to mock him as the absentee Archon of Mondstadt. True. 
while Raiden ended up isolating her entire nation for the sake of eternity. Yeah, listen, every time I, you know, every time I see this, I always think, what the fuck were you thinking, Raiden? <laughs> but then I remember her backstory and how traumatic it was, and there was a lot of shit going on. And honestly, I kind of understand it a little bit. Still don't understand the story quest act one with the dango date and everybody just forgiving super quickly. To be honest, that's something that I don't really understand. But the rest of it, I kind of get it. Best Archon so far, A, who hurt you? Listen, I think A is, gr listen, I think Anne's great. I love Anne. I don't really like A. Well, I do, but only now. After, like, at two of her story quest. Personally. That's how I feel. So far, it seems like Archons protect their people out of their own desire instead of Celestia's. Hmm. I kind of agree with that. Could Farina be trying to balance between the two as to not completely destroy her people? And is willing to go as far as to sacrifice herself for her ideal of justice. Honestly, if Farida did go kaput, I feel like a lot of people would be pissed off. I'd be okay with it if they did it in a good way and it, and it like... Honestly, chat, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Would I rather have, number one, the prophecy get fixed by some means that we can't think of right now, but that would be cool. Or would it feel better to have an actual sense of sacrifice and loss to save the whole nation and people of Fontaine by literally sacrificing one of the main people of Fontaine? She won't die because she, she's a playable character. It's Hoyaverse, guys. I, they fucking don't care, I promise you. As the name of the Archon Quest says, Masquerade of the Guilty. That it does. It seems like the one who's truly guilty is the Hydro Archon herself, yes. Maybe the old one, though. And these past 500 years have all just been the masquerade or fake show she put up. Yeah, the old Hydro Very Walker. Well, Nervalette. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these 500 years. Damn. But Nervalette seems to have finally found a solution to all this. You know, if you could make water droplets like that with your bare hands, would you do it and, like, put them in your mouth and use them as... I feel like it'd feel weird. Drinking the water that you create. Would you drink your own water? For sure, of course. I feel like it'd be a bit weird, dude. Because why don't you do it now then, chat? You'll sweat. You do it. I don't know. It's just a little odd. I now understand the true purpose behind this position. You are a devious one for Salor. That voice line makes me so sad because it's like he knows that Fosalor is setting up a plan and what she was cooking is for her to die so he gets the noses. That's what I get just from that singular voice line, dude. That is literally what I get from that singular fucking voice line. Ray Chase is such a good VA that I can, you can tell the emotions. We know Fosalor was cooking something and he's upset by whatever she was cooking, dude. Listen to it, chat. Listen to it. You are a devious one, Fosalor. It's like I've heard that exact line before somewhere else, and it's like, oh, you're such a devious one. Like, after she's already died or something, or sacrificed herself for the greater good. Bro, I, I can see it happening. There's also another possibility. True. There's always more than one. If the popular theory that the real Fosalor is inside the Oratrice is true, uh, then the one that will be punished might be the Oratrice itself instead of Farina. That is what I'd hate. Cat with Blue Hat is correct. That is... Another another possibility that could happen. Didn't the Oratrice give out the verdict though? Yeah, but that doesn't matter. Because that's a get out of jail free again. You know what I'm saying, chat? This is what I'm saying where like we get we lose nothing and gain everything. No. I suppose this would also be the justice that belongs to you. Mm. All will eventually end in a magnificent and dramatic trial. True. Farewell, Nervalette. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these five hundred years. The voice sounds like Farina, but has a more mature tone compared to the one we know. It does, and that's why I say it could be a different like type of Farina. Or honestly, it could be a it could be Agaria. It could be. Would it add up that if Agaria did create all the people in Fontaine, she would have also created Farina chat? Would that would that add up timeline wise? Agaria has another VA. Oh yeah, true. She's not in the description. Could this be the real Fossil or perhaps the original Farina? Yeah, or both. She could be the one who accepts the death sentence and passes on the duty of justice to Farina. I kind of, this might just be a me thing, dude. I kind of really don't want it to be two separate entities. Like, I don't want Farina and Fosalor to be two literal different th people. 
I don't want that. I feel like it's still the same person, just like Bua and Nahida is. We'll see, I guess. The name of this character is Skirk, a person from the darkest corners of the universe. Yeah, you don't say. You don't say. Maybe from a different universe. I have a feeling she might be a descender, dude. When Child was 14 years old, he fell into the abyss and was trained by her. Yup, he was. Someone on my YouTube comment said Child was eating good in the abyss, huh? Like, bro, he was 14. <laughs> How long did he spend? Time does move different now there, so I don't know how old he was when he fucking left, but Jesus Christ. He was eat probably eating fucking Pop Rocks and Cinnamon Toast Crunch, to be honest. Uh, everything Child knows about combat comes from her. Yes. She's strong as shit, dude. Strong as shit. His foul legacy transformation is also something Skirk taught him. Mm -hmm. Oh, he, he did always have the white uh, tips on top of the hair. I should hope the next we meet... I'll at least be able to force her to use both hands to beat me. It's been years since I last saw my master. Hmm. I should hope the next we meet, I'll at least be able to force her to use both hands to beat me. That's what everybody else said. Jesus, Skirk is quite is a quiet, quiet and mysterious swordswoman and a very strict teacher. She's able to survive in the abyss and is also taught the same to Tartalia. However, it is unknown if she's part of the abyss order or not. Yeah, no, literally, one no time, one knows that. I asked her why she was willing to take me on as an apprentice. From what I could make of her answer, it was because I had awakened it, and traces of it remained on me. She said that all my combat training would be useful in the future. At that time is literally now. He awoke the fucking primordial whale. I still think primordial and abyssal are going to be very similar to each other, chat. I said this weeks ago at this point, and I think Skirk will give us more answers on that. A lot of people thought like primordial and celestial would be similar, but I think it's the opposite way around. I think primordial and abyssal are going to be like interchangeable to an extent. Ever since the incident I experienced there... I've never stopped searching for Master Skirk and that unknown abyss. Mm. But it's been years now, and I've still found nothing. There isn't even a trace of the place where I remember falling into the abyss. Her design itself also looks like it's from Honkai Impact or Star Rail. She literally looks like Jing Liu with Zila clothes, dude. Yeah, like she just does. And I'm fucking here for it. I actually really like this design. A lot of people keep saying it's really basic. I disagree. I think a lot of people... Here's the thing, chat. Here's the thing. If she's a descender, this design is perfect, dude. That just shows that Hoya have such a integral design philosophy based on the video game universes that you look at this character and think she doesn't look like she belongs in this game. She looks like she belongs in this other Hoyaverse game. But if she's not a descender, then I, I kind of get it. It's like she doesn't look like a Genshin character. She looks more like a Honkai character. But... I have a strong feeling she might be a descender, dude. Otherwise, I don't think they'd make... I feel like they've specifically made her look like a fucking Honkai character. They've got to have, dude. I don't know. There's no way. It could be that she's not from Tavat and is, is that a descender like the Traveler. I really hope so. That makes the most sense to me. Perhaps the Primordial one and its four shades will also have similar designs as they too aren't from Tavat. Yeah, I'd, I'd hope so. This idea is not too far-fetched because we've seen another such design before. Yep. The sustainer of heavenly principles. She looks nothing like a Genshin character. Yep. We can see a break in the floor of the Opera Epiclus through which the Narwhal will spawn. Oh yeah, that is in the fucking Opera Epiclus. We see the aura trees here. Interesting. In this scene, Nuvala appears to be flying over the entire region of Fontaine. Yeah, he does. With his no in hand, hopefully. Will he use his powers to suppress the flood that will drown all of Fontaine? So here's the thing here as well. Here's the thing, chat. I want to point something out here because I, I did notice this. There's raindrops on his shoulder. I think this little thing of water here and this, I think these are tears. Because I think there'd be more if this was like from rain. I think he's crying his little fucking eyes out because it is also raining outside too. But I, I'm pretty sure these are tears. Without the Gnosis, he might not have full powers to do something like this. I agree, but I, st I still stand by what I think is going to happen. I think a part of Farina will die, which will mean that he gets the Gnosis because it takes for an Archon to die. 
we already know it's the mental and physical part of the Archon that seem to have been like separated or something's gone on. I think he'll get the Gnosis. I think he'll use his dragon powers after making a deal with Alakino and Farina to be able to use it to save the nation because Alakino wants that as well. And then I think he'll give it to Alakino because the Fatui get everything in the end anyway. But I think the main reason they're going to get it is because they want the Fatui to get it because they're going to be on the same team all along. They're just going about things in very different ways, as I always say, dude. I, I think the Archons, us, and the Fatui are all after the same end goal through different means. And then I think Celestia is going to get pissed off, and at some point we'll get Celestia lore. Please be in 4.2. Unless he temporarily borrows the Hydrodosis. Yeah, I think he will. I think it will be very temporary. It also looks like Child will be back and will use his foul legacy to fight the Narwhal. Nar Narwhal. <laughs> yeah, Rita. I know that. I, I saw, but it is very cool. Oh, here's a weird but a likely possibility. This person is not child, but Skirk. Foul Legacy is something Skirk taught the child, so it could be her using this transformation. So, I think this is child. I don't think this is Skirk. I, I did think this before, but number one, the design is exactly the same as the Tartalia Foul Legacy. Like, with the ginger hair and then the white on top, like, I don't know. I think this is, I think this is Tartalia. I think the one that we see in the boss fight which is inside of, like, the fucking whale mouth, right? That could be Skirk. I don't think that's Tartalia. I don't think he'd be fighting us. I think that could be Skirk. I, do I don't think this is, though. I don't think this is. He has a Claymore, though? No, this is the Foul Legacy stuff that he has in Phase 3 of his boss fight. Um, But yeah, I think this is just Tartalia. This scene shows the Narwhal breaking through Tartalia's Monoceros uh, Kali constellation. True. Since visions are tied to ambitions and constellations, could this be why Child's vision stopped working because this creature was interfering with this constellation? Yes, I think so. I think so. We also hear Mona and Nicole reign in the 4.2 trailer. Yes, we do indeed. I know you're not a local, but I'd avoid getting too close to any water that looks strange all the same. There's something ominous about it. Well, the water, I mean. It's very sus. It's prophecy, yes. What has been prophesized will be fulfilled. So remember this, chat. Remember Prophecy. this. Remember yes. this, please. What has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You gotta remember, Nicole is the voice that we heard at the end of the Sumeru request who was talking to us about being able to change fate, right? Saying, didn't she say something along the lines of it's possible, but like just incredibly, insanely fucking difficult? She's also a member of the Hexen Circle. Like it, it takes it takes someone incredibly powerful to change fate. Like, fate itself. Even gods can't easily do it? Yes, exactly. Skirk was not a part of the Hexen Circle as far as we know. No. Um, gold was. Right, Chant? Gold was. Uh, um, fuck. Ryan Daughter. Gold. Albedo's creator. For Nicole to be the one saying the prophecy, yes, what has been prophesied will be fulfilled. It's like, even they can't really change the course of fate right now. Because the way she's saying it sounds very confident and pretty... I don't want to say happy, but, like, not worried. So maybe she knows, maybe Nicole knows what this prophecy means and that it's not going to kill Farina as we know her, you know? If you remember, both of them are associated with the Hexen Circle group of mages. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So 4.2 will also have some new Hexen Circle story and lore to look forward to. Ah! Uh, so here's my thoughts here. I, have, I actually have a feeling that this voice line is along with the Mona voice line, is probably from Farina's story quest and not the Archon quest. And I have a feeling after surviving the prophecy, Farina's going to be looking for more information on if the prophecy's been fulfilled or whatever, and then this is where this comes in, and it's like, the prophecy still needs to be fulfilled eventually. You know? That's what I feel like is going to happen. I don't think this will have anything to do with the uh, full Hexen Circle law, sadly. I don't think. This looks sick, though. This scene also probably shows the ending to the Narcissus and Kreutz Auto Quest series. Uh, Hot take here. I don't think they show the ending, even though it's a world quest. I think there's probably going to be a weekly boss tied to this world quest series, because... Wait, do we do we get week... Not weekly boss. Um, fuck. Not weekly boss. I'm dumb. World boss. World boss? Normal boss? World boss. Is it world boss? I think I think there'll be a world boss uh tied to the tied to the quest series for sure. I do. Because we see this, we see the thing falling, and then we see like the portal-esque looking thing as well. Wait, I just realized that actually. Hold on. 
Oh no, it does fall from the one on the ceiling. But then it lines up. Oh no, it didn't. It just fucking falls. I really thought we'd get another hand for the clock to be able to put on this one, dude. 100%. If you remember the last time it ended at the Doomsday Clock is about to strike midnight. Yeah. So does it strike? And that's why this starts happening? Or... But now the entire clock seems to fall apart, suggesting the world was saved. Oh, I didn't see that, actually. I, well, it's it's not that I didn't see it. It's that I, I didn't get that vibe. I got the vibe that it struck midnight and then shit started going down. Not that the world was saved. But, uh, maybe. Maybe. Hmm. It was also revealed that Olakino will be helping Fontaine in this all conquest. Maybe she's doing this in exchange for the Hydronosis? Dude, 100%. 1 million percent. Thanks for watching. Oh, dude, that was a good one. That was a good one. Ah, oh, dude. Oh, I love it. 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 I'm incredibly fucking excited for this, uh, for this Archon Quest chat. Like I say, I don't think there's a single Archon Quest I've been this excited for. Other than this one. This, this is the one that I've been the most excited for easily. Cat with blue hat. Make sure you go check him out.